Yo, what's up everyone? My name is Andrew Warren, and in today's video, I'm going to be discussing some recent purchase decisions I made with Tesla stock, justifying that purchase with some of my reasoning, and then also just simply addressing Tesla stock in its current state at the moment. So, as always, if you all appreciate the transparency, and of course, just enjoy the Tesla videos, please make sure to smash that like button. It really does help me out. But just getting right into the content for today, as you can see from the title, I recently spent $6,000 on Tesla stock today. And so let's go ahead and just check out the share price right now currently. We did have a significant drop in the after hours for Tesla stock. And so for the normal market hours, we got a plus 1.64% gain. That is $7.24 added on to the share price. Yet in the after hours, we got a minus 5.8%. 7% loss and that is minus $26.38. And so just to give you all some of the reasoning as to why we saw this drop in the after hours, I think this mostly can be attributed to Elon Musk's tweet on Twitter where he made a tweet at 456 talking about how for battery day that things wouldn't get into full production for like the Cybertruck, the Roadster, and the Semi until 2022, and that they would also be increasing their purchases with their battery suppliers, like with Panasonic, LG, and CATL. However, I did mention in this most recent video on my channel that I thought this tweet was actually kind of good news because it emphasizes the demand that Tesla and Elon Musk foresees in the future for 2022, and what I think is actually going to happen is we're going to have Tesla producing its own battery cells, adding more vertical integration, yet also having to buy from outside suppliers as well, just because of the fact that they have to meet demand. There's that necessity for those batteries in which they already have supply constraints on batteries, and it's one of the big bottlenecks of the company. So even if they do start up their own Tesla battery cell manufacturing facility, it's going to take time to scale that production. And so in the meantime, they just have to purchase from outside suppliers because they also have to scale just the vehicle production as well. So Tesla would have that additional task of not only producing their own battery cells, but also scaling that business in addition to just scaling their normal vehicle business as well. So there's a lot of effort that would go into that vertical integration. And I think that's why they're still going to continue purchasing more batteries from outside companies in the future while they also produce their own battery cells in the meantime. I think it's just going to be a combination of of the two but as time goes farther on that will give them more time and money to progress this production of their own battery cells in which they could eventually be fully reliant on their own batteries and then selling that to other companies as well so the market did react a little bit negatively to that in terms of i think just the fact that a lot of investors are impatient with this 2022 date in which he said what they announce on battery day will not reach full production until 2022 so a lot of people are simply impatient and then I think a lot of the reason as to why we saw this downturn is just because some investors were expecting or wanting to see more vertical integration. However, that's pretty difficult to expect at this point in time when you have Tesla at this point just trying to scale the business and grow further. And so if they want to keep scaling and building more gigafactories, they have to have that battery supply to go along with those vehicles. And right now they simply just can't be vertically integrated enough to produce every single battery that they need on their own. Own, and that's why they need this outside supply right now. So that just basically sums up the downturn that we saw at the end of the day where we saw like a 6% drop in the after hours. So anyways, let's go ahead and address this most recent purchase. I'll go ahead and show you all the purchase receipts for today. So let's start off with the first purchase, which is the $5,300. So as you can see, I spent $5,300. I finally got my check today and I also got some money transferred as well. So as you all know, I've been selling some things and then I also got payment from multiple income streams. So I basically just used this money when I could. I actually had been checking my bank account all day long today hoping that I could really buy Tesla stock when it was down like far into the negative but unfortunately my check and transfers didn't go through until later today in which it was actually in the green I believe or at least a little bit under the baseline in the red when I made this second purchase but just addressing the first purchase I spent $5,300 on 12.005 shares at a share price of $441.48 and this was at 5.09 p.m. 
So like I said, the reason that I purchased at this time period was simply because that's when I actually had access to my money. It finally went through into my bank account and I could transfer it to Robinhood. Keep in mind that I really wanted to purchase earlier in the day when it was at a discount, but my money just simply didn't go through by then. So I had to purchase when it was at a higher price tag. And then also we have the second purchase of $700 for 1.617 shares at a share price of $432.70. And this was at 523 p.m. So as you can see, I noticed that Tesla took a little bit more of a dip and I decided to capitalize on that with pretty much the rest of my cash. Everything else right now is reserved for my bills and things like that. And I'm also still gonna have to come up with like another $615 by like the 14th of next month for another credit card bill. But I actually just put that off and delayed it just a little bit more so I could use that money for Tesla stock. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to sell some things and have that paid off by the 14th of next month. But this is basically what I've done today. I spent $6,000 on Tesla stock and my strategy with buying as usual is simply just dollar cost averaging. And if you're not familiar with what that is, that's basically when you have the money to invest, you simply invest it. You don't think about it any further. You don't think about the perfect time to buy at the bottom or the perfect time to sell at the top. You simply just buy the stock when you have the money. And that's the logic that I've used with Tesla so far. And it's been pretty effective. And I've done that across many stocks, not just Tesla. And as you can see, I'm up 74.68% just this past year alone. That's a $65,927.94 gain. So dollar cost averaging has clearly been effective for me so far. And dollar cost averaging is just an investing strategy that I'm a fan of because I'm a type of person that doesn't like to waste any time. If I can do something efficiently and faster and save productivity, especially mental productivity, then that's definitely something I want to take advantage of. And so I think that applies with dollar cost averaging in which you don't have to worry about all of the mental stress of wondering, did you buy at the right time or should you wait until, you know, two weeks from now and then two weeks from now, the stock's way higher than it was at previously and you're frustrated because you didn't just buy previously or if you're just trying to time the perfect bottom and it skyrockets. So there's a lot of just mental gymnastics you have to go through if you're trying to time a perfect time to buy some Tesla stock or just another stock for that matter. So that's why I enjoy dollar cost averaging. It's honestly just a simple approach to investing, but it's really effective. And I think it's honestly something to consider for those newer investors out there that do have this long-term perspective and can of course separate their emotions from the market in the sense that they won't stress if they dollar cost average and then it goes down instantly that day or it goes down the next day you have to have that long-term perspective you have to keep your emotions separated from the market and so if you can do those two things dollar cost averaging is actually a, a pretty effective strategy so as i said i took advantage of buying tesla stock whenever i could i had the cash today so i bought it so i like to practice what i preach in my previous videos i've said once i get more cash i'm going to buy tesla stock and that once i get my payment i'm going to buy it and so that's exactly what i did today so i do like to practice what i preach because i truly believe in this company this takes up 100 percent of my portfolio aside from this free stock that we have over here so this is definitely something i take serious this is a serious investment position it's definitely risky to a lot of people just because of the fact that it's 100 percent of my portfolio and it's also pretty much all of my net worth i put all of my net worth into the stock market so whatever my portfolio is at, that's pretty much my net worth. And also, like I said, I just want to address the receipts in terms of like the prices that I bought at. So I bought at 441.48. If we look at that on the chart, 441.48. So this was a little bit after the dip. So you could say about between this time period, maybe like 457 or something like that. So I did buy it as it was going downwards. And then also the other price that I bought in was at 432.70. So if we go back up here and check that, 432.70. So it was actually somewhere between this point right here and at this point right here. So between 510 and 515. So we can just say I bought it at 513. So I actually bought the dip a little bit today. I took advantage of the dip, especially with that last $700 because I knew that it had gone down since I previously bought with the $5,300 purchase. So I just went ahead and used that last $700 that I had on Tesla stock. And that was actually one that I was saving for the credit card bill next month. 
Like I said, I have to pay like $645 on one of my credit card bills. So that is due on the 14th of next month. However, I saved some money to take care of the one due on the 28th this month. So I'm still going to have to come up with like that $645 to pay for that credit card. So just keep in mind, that was kind of like a mental thought process that I went through because I either had the choice of saving this $700 to pay on the credit card for next month, or I could spend it on Tesla stock and buy the dip a little bit. So I decided to spend it on Tesla stock. And I think that I will be able to come up with the money required for that payment on the 14th of next month because I have a little bit of cash right now to be transferred from my Weeble sales. So I'm going to transfer that and hopefully take care of the credit card. And then also, if necessary, I'll sell some more things by the time of the 14th and just get that taken care of. So that's kind of the mental thought process that I went through to make sure that I could use this extra $700. So I kind of delayed my credit card payment a little bit, even though the due date, nothing has changed about the due date. I just simply did didn't pay it as early as I could have. So I'm just going to try to come up with the money to pay off the credit card. But anyways, I just wanted to share this video with you all because Tesla stock is something that I think is going to look ridiculously cheap in terms of the current share price right now, 10 years from now. So in 2030, I think people are going to look back on Tesla stock and think, wow, I thought it was way too high at this point in time, or I thought it was a little bit overvalued. But just compared to now, that was ridiculously cheap. What was I thinking? So I think this is going to be one of those scenarios. Of course, I could be wrong. Only time will tell, but I'm pretty confident that this is going to be an investment that makes me a pretty solid return. And honestly, I am betting a, a big part of my future on Tesla stock, given that all of my net worth is in Tesla stock. So basically, the future of my life does rely on Tesla, but I am confident in this risky investment decision. Some would say it's risky, some wouldn't. It's all dependent on your risk tolerance. So if you're one of these people that don't believe in, you know, putting 100% of your portfolio in one stock, then this is certainly risky to you. Or if you simply just believe in diversification, this is certainly risky to you. But to me, I know it's a little bit risky, but I've done a lot of research on this company and I'm confident enough to do something like this and actually have it be 100% of my position. So anyways, that's just some of my logic behind everything. I just wanted to have this transparency here and let you all know that I am buying Tesla stock even at these prices right now. So anyways, please make sure to smash that like button if you enjoyed the video and also feel free to check out Robinhood and Weeble in the description below if you sign up with my referral link you'll get some free stocks and especially with Weeble right now you can get two free stocks valued up to $1,400 and all you have to do is sign up with my referral link and deposit $100 into your account keep in mind you can take that $100 right back out after you get your free stocks so it's basically just nice passive income just want to let you all know about that but hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week